Want to turn your passion for drawing into a full-time career? Discover our courses at BrushCamp where you become a master in the realm of digital painting. BrushCamp offers tons of similar courses in illustration, 2D, 3D design. Level up your creativity with free knowledge and courses. Visit BrushCamp.com today and explore endless possibilities. Hello guys. Today we will learn how to blend. How to blend chromas together. So that a hard block like this can become a softer block like this. I will create an ellipse as an example. Now how to fill color here. We have a tool here. Click on it and you will see. A tool called Paint Bucket Tool with the letter G. I will fill it with orange. It will fill in with full color. Its shortcut key is the G key. I will see TRLZ. For example, I will use a brush to paint as usual. But doing like this is very time consuming. And sometimes the strokes are dark or light. Then we just need to press the G key. And remember, it must be in paint bucket tool mode, which is the tool to fill this color. Don't set it in gradient tool mode. For this tool, I will press G. Click on it and it will fill in full color here. There will be shortcuts here, I will guide you. That is alt backspace or alt delete. Here you will see it has two colored boxes. One above and one below, right? This upper color box is called the foreground. Click to select type. The colored box above is the foreground. Press Trolla, I will adjust the text size to about 16. Just small. Press CTRLJ and it will duplicate, like this. Change to background. It will have two color styles that you can imagine here. The foreground color is on top, and the background color is on the bottom. I will create a selection like this. Now I want to fill the foreground color. Foreground now is orange, background is white. For example, now I will change the foreground color to green. As for the background color, I will change it. Remember we have the X key. When you press the X key, the colors of the foreground and background will switch to each other. For example, now I change the background color to blue. Then I will choose red. So we will get the foreground color as red and the background color as green. If I now want to fill this circle with the foreground color, I will press Alt Backspace. Alt Backspace. It has already filled this selection with color. Ctrl D to exit the command. Now I want to create another selection. I want to fill the selection with this green background color. Then we just need to press CTRL Backspace, and it will fill the color very quickly. If you want to change the color back, press X key to change the color, the two cells back and forth. If you want to change these two boxes to the default color of black and white, press the D key. Press D and it will change to black and white. When drawing, please note that, sometimes when drawing layers, if you accidentally press the letter Q, you can see that this layer will be red. That is quick selection. So press the Q key one more time to exit that command. Or sometimes we accidentally click on the color of the background box. It only changes the color of the background box, not the foreground color. You will see it has a light border around the background box. Then remember to click above to choose the foreground color. If you click on the border below, it will only change the color below. Every time something like this happens, you won't be able to paint, right? Now I will draw a sphere like this. Let me show you four ways to blend. Select everything and press CTRLG to group it. CTRL shift in or click this icon to create a new layer. I think we can turn off the things related to fill color. Click the move tool. Select these. Then we can combine it. The important part in this video is about blending. Now I will draw a sphere. Hold down the shift key to make it round into a sphere. Once you've created the selection, you can name it and click on it. Name it sphere underscore one. We can set the color red for this layer. I will use this board to choose colors. For me, initially it will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven chromas. People fill with a dark color, but I want to fill with a medium chroma color like this. To pick colors, while using the brush, hold down Alt. Then you will be able to choose the color. Do you see? If I want to fill color into this sphere underscore one layer, I select this correct layer and press Alt backspace. It will fill this layer with color. Ctrl D to exit the selection. So I have a round sphere. 
I will use Photoshop's default hard brush. And this brush does not have opacity. When I paint it, it has no opacity. And so that when drawing it doesn't bleed outside the selection. We will use Clipping Mask, Sublayer. CTRL Shift N, create a new layer. Then I will CTRL Alt G to create a sublayer. Then I will choose a darker color to paint. For example, the color next to this side, darker. You can see that when you fill it in, it won't bleed outside the selection. Remember to use the hard round brush without opacity. So that I can draw on it without errors like this. It's blurred like this. I will use the hard brush and paint exactly like this. To separate the hardness. In order for us to learn how to blend colors, you can increase the brush size so that we can paint a circle. Did you got it? Like this. Are the other chromas. For example, now I choose this chroma to be brighter. I will fill it in here. It doesn't have to be round. It will be round later when you blend the colors together. Roughly like this. For this chroma, I will draw it a little round like this. You can erase her or hold down the key next to the number one key on the left side to fix it again. Or maybe another way is to use the command. Do you remember that command? I use this marquee tool and create a circular selection like this. Press Alt Backspace to fill in the color. I'm trying to use many different ways. To help you remember the lessons, I just paint in, it doesn't matter if it bleeds a little. It's okay if the bowl is a little smudged. Later when I blend it, it will automatically become round. Continue adding a brighter chroma here, in the center here. So what are these? You look here. The light will have components like this. It will have a central part, which is the color part of the object that is not brighter or darker. That's this gray color called halftones. The brightest part will be the highlight, the lightest area on the form. It looks like there is a light bulb shining here. It is actually a reflection of the light source. Next is core shadow which means the dark band visible, where light and shadow meet. It is the darkest area of the shadow on the sphere. And the part below, please pay a little attention. This lower part is called reflected light. The light shines from this side, reaching the surface on which the sphere rests, bounce off of it into the shadow, and lighten its value. So you'll see it's a bit bright in this area, right? The area below the ground will light up a little like this. You should understand that the light will shine like that. And it will always have components like this. And there's also cast shadow. You will learn more about these things in the following sessions. I'm just borrowing this image for a simple drawing. When drawing, remember that the object will have two sides, light and dark. And the line separating light and dark is the darkest. That's it. You just need to remember that. Now I'm missing the part core shadow. That is the dark band visible where light and shadow meet. Here I will choose a darker chroma to create the core shadow here. Like this. For example, here, I can use this intermediate chroma to draw on this upper part a little more. Like this, so I can adjust the chroma. Like this we can separate many chromas. Below is reflected light. Now I have a sphere with the chromas separated like this. Roughly there will be chromas like this. So now I will duplicate this layer into four. So that I can draw four cases for you all to see. I will choose both of these. I will select these two layers and press Ctrl T. Now we can move the object. We can move both of these layers at the same time. For example, now I select both layers and press CTRLJ to duplicate them. CTRLJ, then it will duplicate. As you can see it will create two layers here. Now we can separate and pull it out. Remember that when you are in Trolti mode, the mode where you consider all layers as one image, so that you cannot press CTRLJ, you have to enter to exit it. Then I select those two layers. Hold down shift to select two layers. And again CTRLJ to duplicate. And then press CTRLT to become an image so I can drag it down. Continue CTRLJ and CTRLT to create another shape. 
So now I have four spheres. I press T to create a name for it. For the first sphere I will use a hard brush. I will use the most rudimentary and basic things. Use hard brushes to blend. It is not necessary to use soft brushes to blend. We can use any brush. I will choose a certain color, the color in the central position. First I will use the hard brush. Hard brush. Then I click on the topography layer and press CTRLJ. Just remember to duplicate an object. Press CTRLJ and drag over here. Press enter and press CTRLJ. Scroll down here. CTRLJ. Pull over here. Now I will rename each object. The first object I will use a hard brush. As for the second one, I will change the name to soft brush. Then I pressed S to exit the command. For this object, I use another tool called Mixer Brush. Mixer. When I see the word mix, I know it can be mixed together. The last tool is one that I also often use. That is the smudge tool. I've got for objects, now I'll start with the hard brush. Press draw. I'm in another tools mode. As I said, I want to choose the right layer. For example, here it is selecting the wrong layer, so the mouse will have a circle with a cross icon. Meaning I can't do anything. It will appear like this, I won't be able to do anything, so I will hold down Troy and click. It will return to our correct layer, we can change its color. Change to orange. Change this to green and change this to violet. The first one I will use is a sphere. I'm going to use this hard round pressure opacity brush, so I can blur it a little bit. For example, I select and fill in the region that intersects a bit. We will see it creates a blurred color. Then we will select that color. And we can blend this middle area. I still use Photoshop's default brushes. I don't use anything fancy. Same here. I will also pick outside. Pick that color and fill it in. At first it will be a little difficult. But actually, just blend circularly according to that area. When you look from a distance, you will see that contouring has started to get softer. Have you seen it? We're making these color areas smoother. To make it easier for you to imagine, I will see TRLZ. I will create a new layer so you can see it easier. I will create another new layer as a sublayer. Now I will choose a color to fill in. I will blend in here. I will choose this color to fill in. I will fill in the contiguous area where the two rays intersect. Like now, if I add more chromas in the middle, the color patches will automatically soften. Just now it was because I separated the chroma a bit too strongly. Now I just need to fill it in. The bowl is slightly rounded. Same with this. Choose a lighter color to fill in. Pressing a little, paint here and pick that mid-tone color. And paint outwards so the edges are blurred. For example like this. I will turn on, off so you can see it. So blending colors is not too difficult. We just need to know how to control our hand force. Using hard brushes to blend is okay. It will create lines that look quite interesting. Hard brush will not blend too smoothly. I show you four ways. But you can use a combination of four ways together. It is not necessary that you can only use for separate ways. All of these ways are to help us be as effective as possible. For example, this one is being blended. I will use a hard brush, our brush must be big, to paint both the lower and upper areas, so that when blended, it will be easy to mix together. Like this. I will pick the color of the upper area and blend it into the lower area. And pick the color of this area and blend. Pick this color so I can blend it into this area, so the colors are mixed together. The area below does the same. I can choose a dark color and paint on top. So it becomes a transition. Pick a dark color and paint on top.
or blend like this. Pick a dark color and blend it down to the bottom area. Pick a dark color and blend it through. When we blend many times, it will lose the lines. Or we have to use a slightly larger brush to blend more. This depends a lot on your eyes. You have to look and check how to make this transition as stable as possible, do you see? The transition of this sphere is starting to look smoother. We will use a slightly larger brush to create the transition. And the force of our hands, when painting between the two color layers, starts to become lighter, so we can blend more smoothly. This depends on your time. For example, the more time you have, the more detailed you can blend. I'm just doing a quick demo. You can see it has become a circle by blending with a hard brush. Next is this sphere. I created a new layer and converted it to a sublayer. Now I will use a soft brush. I used the hard round pressure opacity brush earlier. Now I will use the soft round pressure opacity brush to paint. Why do I use the hard round pressure opacity brush? Pressure here means the pressing force of the hand. If we press a little, it's going to be more pale. And if we press harder, it's going to be more opaque. It will allow us to be more adjustable. Now I use a soft brush, which is exactly the same as a hard brush. I will choose a dark color and paint it on the upper area. Then I pick mid-tone color from the central area and paint in an area a little closer to the middle area. This area is the same. I will blend it out. I will pick this color and blend until this border is lost. Like this. Each way will be different and interesting. I will paint its border. It seems like a soft brush will help us blend smoother and faster. But it also has the disadvantage that sometimes it will make these patches to blurry. Although lines will be visible in this block, it is quite interesting to look at. If you paint with a soft brush, you can just paint freely. Paint the way I did. I'll increase the size of the soft brush a bit. So we can get the border. Increase the brush size a bit. Same here, choose dark colors. Paint into this area. Reduce the brush size a bit to blur this border. We will blend from the top area to the bottom area. And we will blend the bottom area to the top area. We will blend evenly on both sides. Not just blending from top down, or just from bottom up. Blend on both sides to make it even. When blending, try to blend a little evenly. Like this. You see, everything has been blended smoothly and quite quickly. Using a soft brush it will look like this. For example, if the line in this area is still a bit sharp, it can be blended further. Increase the brush size and blend in. Use a larger brush to blend and blend. It has formed a circular mass. Of course, you must understand that the sphere at the edge will have a slightly darker color. Actively paint the color of the edge a little darker to create a rounded effect for the block. This is the same. It'll convert from top to bottom properly, right? So it should be light above here and down here. The color will be darker. Did you guys got it? Soft brush. That's the sphere that I use the soft brush on. Next I will use another brush. This brush will lag the computer a bit if your computer is weak. That is the mixer brush. What is a mixer brush? First I will use the brush. Still a brush. But if I click on the arrow below, it will show quite a few types. You'll see below, the last one is called mixer brush tool. That is the brush we need. It has an icon of a brush with a drop of water next to it. It's like we are using oil paints to paint. It will blend the colors together, mix them together. You remember its customs, it tweaks a bit. Here is the mixer brush, so I will click on this. Select load solid color only. Just select load solid color only. Don't let it have too many colors. Only load one color. And remember, these two things must be checked in. This is to clean the brush. Just remember these parameters correctly. Remember to take these two boxes. I will choose wet, light mix. Click in wet, light mix. Wet will be 50%, 
load 50% and mix about 0%. Flow is 100% page 50, but these are 50%. Please remember parameters like this. I'll use hard round pressure opacity brush to paint. Increase the brush size a bit. Now I will pan and paint on the layer containing this. You see, when I blend, the colors mix together. When you drag like this, the two colors will mix together. The colors mix together. It will blend together. Like this. One more thing is that, when we use the highlight area, please note that. Sorry because I haven't talked clearly about this. So what does load solid only color mean? For example, if I choose a light color, this will load into a light color, which means it will blend this light color with these two colors. Did you get it? It will mix bright colors with these two colors. It will mix bright colors with these two colors. You see? I use a slightly larger brush so I can paint without clumping. It's exactly like I'm using oil paints to paint. I wonder if any of you have tried it. I will blend in this bright area. I will pick the color of the bright area, and I will blend into the border here, blend it to make it blurry. Blend the border. Blend the border. I use this gray brush. The method is exactly the same, as the way I use the hard brush. Just like I did with a hard brush. When I blend like this, you can see. This mixer brush tool will sometimes make the brush strokes random. Now I will choose this color and paint in here. I will reduce the brush size. Use a brush to blend the colors out. Use a large brush stroke like this to blend colors. I will blend over and blend again. Please pay attention to blend slowly. Don't blend too hard because sometimes it will erase the entire area. Blend slowly little by little like this. Same here, I will fill in the color. I chose this dark color to blend. We just need to blend a little. This is the same, blend and blend to make it smooth. The same goes for this area below. Blend until smooth. Increase the brush size a bit. Each method will have its own pros and cons. You see, the mixer brush creates a block that looks exactly like we are drawing with oil paints. It has lines. Looks pretty cool. We can combine both. For example, I can use a combination of mixer brush and hard brush. Or we will first use the hard brush to blend like this. And then using the mixer brush to blend more. For example like that. That's also a good way. Here I will blend more. It's like the hard brush. Except when I use the mixer brush, the colors blend together a little better. This tool is actually quite difficult to use. We can use soft brush. I have been using a hard brush for this foreground. Now I will use a combination of mixer brush with soft brush. You can see that when I use a soft brush to blend, the blended areas are smoother. You can use a combination of soft brush and mixer brush, which is also quite convenient. When using a soft brush, it becomes smooth very quickly. Depending on you, you can increase the brush size to blend. The example above uses a brighter color. Then my block will be round. Of course it will have some patchy areas. That could be because I didn't drag firmly when blending. If this side is round, then this side must also be round. Below this, it will gradually decrease in brightness. Blend to make the block look rounder. Did you get it? That's the mixer brush tool. You see, each way creates a slightly different style. The last tool is one that I often use, which is the smudge tool. Click on the tool with the icon, with a finger pointing down like this. When you click on it, you will see that it has three tools. 
Blur tool, sharpen tool, and smudge tool. I will choose smudge tool. I will choose this hard round brush. When using the smudge tool, if you use Photoshop's default brush, it will not work well. We won't be able to use much of that. Then we can only drag like this. We will have a brush for the smudge tool. I'll use this adjustment brush. You don't need to worry too much about how to adjust. I just use that same brush. Then when you blend in it will be very smooth. This brush has strength. For example, if its strength is about 32%, it will be very strong. It will blend very strongly, you see? If you want a light blend, you can reduce the strength to about 10%. Then blend it in and you'll see that it's smooth enough. I use a slightly larger brush. Strength is about 10%, low so you can see easily. We'll blur slightly like this. Blur just like this. Remember that this finger icon is bold. I will blend this border. Blend in a circular. Blend again. Use a slightly larger brush to blend. This area is the same. You can see that. This smudge brush is quite beautiful. It helps these areas blend quite smoothly together. Just blending right at the border will make it look very round. Same with this. Blending speed is very fast. The blending speed of this smudge brush is extremely fast. You can use it to draw. I want to reduce this strength to about 5%. Once the sphere looks almost complete, we can reduce the strength to about 5% to blend a little more. Blend just enough. Lower the strength and blend. We've got a sphere like this. Pretty fast, right? You see here I have four ways. But like I said, we can use it flexibly. For example, the hard brush sphere can be left like this or you can use the smudge tool to blend smoother. It's okay to blend a little more. I will blend them together. So we will have these four ways to blend colors together. Your assignment is that you will draw these four spheres. And you will use exactly four ways like I did to get used to. The most basic way to use a brush is to know how to use a normal hard brush or soft brush. Then you continue to use more complicated tools, such as mixer brush or smudge tool, to understand and you know many different ways to handle it. It's not like you only know one way. For example, you don't have smudge tool, etc. Then you won't be able to do it. Diversifying painting methods is very important. In many cases when drawing in digital painting, hopefully after this session, it will help you discover how to do it. Understand why people can blend hard color patches smoothly. And that is also the premise for you to no longer be afraid of. The fact that you have to draw soft at first. You just keep drawing hard and then we will blend later. Thank you for watching. See you in the next videos. Bye bye. Please like and subscribe to our channel.